Why would any Christian choose to live a godly life when we know we're already forgiven for our sins and we're going to heaven? In this video, I'm gonna share with you seven benefits of living a godly life. Come on. Hey, my friend, welcome back to The Beat. My name is Alan Parr. Thank you so much for tuning in. If this is your first time here, it's a pleasure. If you want a free ebook, click the link in the description box below. If you enjoy this video, consider subscribing. Hit that little bell notification so you won't miss a beat. Okay, so today's question is actually a very interesting question, right? So if we know we're gonna be forgiven for our sins and we know we're gonna go to heaven, then what is the point of struggling all the way through the Christian life, denying our flesh from the things that it wants to to do when we already are going to get to heaven anyway, right? So in this video, I want to give you seven things, seven benefits, seven reasons why I want to encourage you to take godliness serious. Reason number one is that godliness provides a better conscience. I want you to notice here that Paul says, so I strive always to keep my conscience clear before God and man. So Paul understood that if he was going to serve God in ministry, it was going to be very difficult for him to do that if he had all sorts of sin and sinful thoughts in his mind because the Holy Spirit's job whenever you get saved is to convict you of your sin. His job is to not let you have peace and joy and contentment and happiness in your life when your heart and your mind and everything in you is just contaminated with sin. And so Paul said, if I'm going to be effective in doing what I need to do, I need to strive to keep my conscience clear, which a godly life will enable you to do that. The the second benefit of living a godly life is that it provides increased effectiveness in ministry. I want you to notice, once again, Paul says here, if you keep yourself pure, you will be a special utensil for honorable use. Your life will be clean and you will be ready for the master to use you for every good work. So I want you to notice several things here. It says, first of all, if you keep yourself clean, this is something that you can't pray for. This is something that you have to do on your own. He says, if you do this, God will use you like a special utensil. You will be ready for God to pull you off of the shelf so that God can do some amazing things in you and through you in ministry. But this cannot happen whenever we're not living a God life because essentially we're going to be constantly living beneath our spiritual potential. Reason number three is that godliness provides a better opportunity to witness to the outside world. Notice that Peter says here, be careful to live properly among your unbelieving neighbors. Then even if they accuse you of doing wrong, they will see your honorable behavior and they will give honor to God when he judges the world. So Peter says, hey, if you want to be a good witness to the outside world, it starts with you living a life of godliness, holiness, and integrity so that even if people try to bring up something against you, they won't be able to find anything against you because your life is so clean. Now, if you're in ministry, it is even more important. Paul says that this is one of the requirements for anyone who wants to be a minister. It says here, also people outside the church must speak well of him so that he will not be disgraced and fall into the devil's trap. So when our character and our integrity and our holiness and our godliness is all jacked up, it is very difficult for us to share our faith with other people because number one, they're going to be looking at your life and saying, hey, why should I follow your God whenever your God has made absolutely no difference in your life? What in the world is he going to do for me? But then second of all, it's hard for us to witness to other people because internally we know that we are living a hypocritical life and so there's a certain amount of shame and guilt for sharing our faith with other people when we know we're not living the life ourselves. The fourth reason for living a godly life is that godliness leads to better blessings in this life. Notice it says here, for the scriptures say, if you want to enjoy life and see many happy days, keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from telling lies. Turn away from evil and do good. Search for peace and work to maintain it. The eyes of the Lord watch over those who do right and his ears are open to their prayers, but 
the Lord turns his face against those who do evil. Listen, I am telling you this, just take it from me, trust me on this. If you want to see the blessings of God poured out over your life, it starts with living a life that is above reproach. It starts by living a life that is characterized by godliness and holiness and integrity. But whenever we don't do that, basically we're inviting the discipline of God to be poured out on our lives because God is our father. And just like a father disciplines their child in the same way, God will discipline us. I believe wholeheartedly that when we live lives that are characterized by sin, we are basically forfeiting blessings that God wants to bestow on our lives. The fifth benefit of living a godly life is that it leads to better heavenly blessings in eternity. Jesus said, store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and rust cannot destroy and thieves do not break in and steal. Living a godly life does not only have benefits for this life, but it also has benefits for eternity. Now listen, if you're fortunate, you may live on this earth 50, 60, 70, maybe 80, maybe even 90 years, but eternity is forever. And so you should be thinking at every situation and every decision that you make with every temptation that comes your way, how will this affect me throughout all eternity? The sixth the next benefit of living a godly life is that it leads to better intimacy in terms of your relationship with God. I want you to notice here, Jesus said, God blesses those whose hearts are pure for they will see God. So if you really want to have intimacy with God, if you want God to show you things, if you want God to reveal things to you, if you want to have that intimate connection with God to where he speaks to you and you know that you're hearing from him and you want to see him, it starts with living a godly life. Notice also Jesus said this, those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. And because they love me, my father will love them and I will love them. And here it is, reveal myself to each of them. Listen, when your life is characterized by sin, my friend, it is very difficult for you to get into your word and study your word. It's difficult to pray. It's difficult to fast. It's difficult to worship. It's even very difficult to be around other Christians because your mind and your conscience and your spirit and your soul is all jacked up and you don't even, you're not even in the right place to be able to receive whatever it is that God wants to receive because it's got to make its way through all of the sin and all of the contamination that is going on in your heart. So you're limiting yourself from having the type of intimacy that God wants to have with you. And then the seventh and final benefit of living a godly life is that it leads to a much better emotional state of mind. Notice that Paul says here, keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me everything you heard from me and saw me doing. Now here it is. Then the God of peace will be with you. So if you want to experience peace and joy in your life, it starts with living a godly life. God says, hey, I will allow you to have peace which passes all understanding when you make up your mind and commit to living a life that is characterized by godliness and holiness. So my friend, if you are watching this video and you are stuck in sin, I want to encourage you to take godly is serious and take your sin seriously because in this video I've shared with you seven things, seven benefits, seven different ways that God wants to bless your life and enhance your life, but it can only happen whenever you make up the decision to live a godly life. If you found this video helpful in any way, feel free to share it with a friend. Also, if you haven't done so already, I would love it if you would subscribe. Check out some of the other videos on this channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time on The Beat. Thank <laughs> you.